Hey guys, welcome back to another video, or if you're new, welcome to my channel, The Appalachian Home. So today I worked on this order I got for an extra large sign, and it has some really large lettering and swashes, so I thought I would share building it with you guys, and also give you some tips for doing large areas of vinyl lettering or stenciling. I'm starting out with some Luon board. I usually use either Luon board or smooth plywood that's really thin for all of my signs, and this is 3 16 inch thick and it's 50 inches long by 22 inches wide. So I'm starting out with that and I just take 220 grit sandpaper over the entire sign. I normally use either a paint roller or a paintbrush to paint all of my signs, but I did order this Rockler spray paint gun and I got it off of Amazon, so I wanted to try it. And I'm just using regular white flat paint in there and I just added just a little bit of water to use with this. The best thing about it is that it's electric. You don't have to use an air compressor or anything with it. And it's very quick to set up and I really liked the way that it painted. This video is not sponsored in any way by this paint gun, but I really needed some other way to start painting my signs. Um, and so I thought this would be much quicker. After my sign had completely dried, there was like this sandy texture to it, which sometimes happens to signs. And I'm not sure if that was from the paint gun or from some of the particles in the air because I've painted this outside. So normally when that happens, I just take a really fine grit sandpaper and just lightly go over the entire sign. And it doesn't scratch my paint. It just takes care of any of those little tiny sandy particles. Now I'm just going to show you quickly how you can create this design in Cricut Design Space. The first thing that I did was actually draw out a square the size of my sign. So I drew out a square that was 50 inches by 22 inches so I could see how all of my text fit together. But I just typed out the word home and changed the font to a font called Gabella. And then I just adjusted the spacing of all my letters until they were attached. Then I typed out another text box in Courier New Font. And that is this box here, the story of who we are. But these swashes did not come with the word home. I uploaded these swashes. I actually drew them on my iPad. And I uploaded this to my computer. And then uploaded them to Design Space. And then I just resized my swashes until they fit the size of my word. And then I just attached them to my word and welded everything together. Once I have everything laid out the way I want and know that it's gonna fit on my sign, I go ahead and remove the squares and frames so I can start working on my text. A tip when you are doing really large text in Design Space is to use the slice tool and divide the image. I've already welded all of my text together and now I'm using just a regular square. I'm resizing the square and kind of rotating it to fit between some words in this large text box. And I'm also doing my swashes the same way. I've welded this word together and I'm using a square and just dividing these swashes away from the word so that I can get all of this to actually cut out because Design Space will only cut out a certain area. I think it's 23 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. So now that I've done that, all of my three cutouts are gonna fit on these three mats and I can cut them all out separately and put them back together on my sign. So as you can see, I have a really large area of vinyl that I'm going to remove. Um, a tip I've found that works for removing large areas of vinyl is just to use it with a small pair of scissors and cut a line between the text, like between the lines of the text, and then just remove either the top half or the bottom half or one line at a time. That really helps and it also helps to keep from pulling up pieces of the letters that you want to keep.
For the frames, I'm using three quarter inch by one and a half inch frame boards, and I cut out a notch using a table saw that was three sixteenths inch deep and three eighths inch wide. And these dimensions allow the sign board to sit flush inside the frame when it's all assembled together. And on the ends of the top and bottom, I notched out a three quarter inch wide little square so that the sides could fit flush inside of those. Thank you guys so much for watching another video. I hope you guys really enjoy these videos and find them inspiring and helpful. And I still have some other Inkscape videos that I really want to get up there that I've not got up there yet, but I promise I will be posting those in the future. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.